Population growth has been a hot topic in Canada over the last year. On the one hand, it is raising some questions about our housing market's ability to support newcomers. On the other, there is an argument for driving economic growth at a time of lagging productivity. For more on the debate, as well as his new report, we're joined by Randall Bartlett, Senior Director of Canadian Economics at Desjardins. Randall, thanks so much for coming in. Well, thanks so much for having me, Jacqueline. So this really has been a, such a focus because of the flow of, of newcomers to Canada, uh, particularly over the past year. Just how much has Canada's economic growth been relying on, on that sort of flood of, of newcomers? Well, when you look at the uh, the growth numbers, it's, uh, it's, it's not unprecedented, but it's the strongest we've seen since the 1950s. And so that's really become the major driver of economic growth in Canada, where when you unpack the data and you look at uh, real GDP per capita, it would, be a, it would have been declining for roughly the last year had it not been for this uh, you know nearly unprecedented pace of population growth. And when you're talking about the economic growth coming from, you know, new people to this country, is it because of the money that they're spending or what they're contributing to the economy in terms of working here? It's it's all of the above. And so when you look at the folks that are coming to uh, to work in Canada now, we, uh, we see both permanent residents coming who are uh, largely coming through the economic stream and so contributing to the economy quickly, but then also folks who are coming uh, through the non-permanent resident stream. And so those are people that, uh, you know, they're foreign students, but most of them are actually coming at the request of employers. So they're quickly finding employment and quickly contributing to the Canadian economy. So you've done some forecasts on where you could see economic growth going, considering some sort of different scenarios in terms of, of Im immigration growth as well. Um, so with your sort of base case for expectations, how do you see that sort of playing out in terms of uh, the, the number of people that were, will be welcoming to the country and then the sort of contribution that they would be making to economic growth? Yeah, so back in December, we December, we published our economic and financial outlook. And what we did in that was we underpinned it with a very detailed population projection. And so what we assumed is that uh, the pace of non-permanent residents would be cut in half in 2024 relative to where it was in 2023, and nearly 800,000 non-permanent residents coming into the country, and then be cut in half again in, uh, in 2025. And so what that led to was uh, population growth uh, roughly in line with what we had uh, last year, uh, and, then, uh, and then falling considerably in 2025, closer to uh, one and a half to two percent. Now that's roughly in line with the Bank of Canada's assumptions that it had that underpin its October 2023 monetary policy report. So it gave us a fair bit of confidence that at least that's what's being used by decision makers when it comes to rates. We were just taking a look at one of your graphs there. Maybe we can bring it back up because um, it, it showed the expectations for economic growth based on uh, the sort of different levels, po the possible different levels of, of immigration growth. So can you give us a, a little bit of color on, on what we're looking at here. Yeah, so what we looked at was uh, both the uh, the impact on uh, unemployment and hours worked if we were to reduce the, uh, the level of uh, non-permanent residents to zero that we admitted in 2024 uh, relative to what we had, say, in 2023. Then we also looked at uh, what the impact would be on, uh, on productivity in Canada. And so what we found was that uh, we would have a recession that would be roughly twice as long uh, as we're currently expecting in the first half of 2024. Uh, and also the recovery would be more shallow than what we would expect uh, in the event of, uh, of our base case scenario. And so a shallower recovery from a deeper recession. So, uh, oh my goodness. So then, I mean, it really sort of hinges on uh, on having this immigration growth potentially in order to um, avoid a recession? Well, it's a really tough balance to strike, Jacqueline, in that, uh, you know, we we know that uh, the, the significant number of people that we're admitting to Canada is putting pressure on uh, the Canadian housing market. It's uh, supporting inflation uh, at a higher level than it would be otherwise, as well as putting strain on government uh, government programs and services. And so uh, we know that's the case. But if we shut the door tomorrow, we also know that that uh, could lead to a significant negative economic shock. And so uh, it makes me glad that I'm not a politician because it is a really tough balance to strike uh, to make sure we're bringing in the right number of people that we need to meet the needs of business and the economy, but also uh, to balance the impact on, uh, on other parts of the economy like the housing market and inflation. You mentioned the productivity side of things as well. Um, what are you seeing on that front uh, in terms of the you know, contribution from, from newcomers to, to productivity, which we know has been in, on a decline in Canada? It's a, it's a problem that people bring up all the time and don't have 
you know, an answer for. Well, it's really interesting because we don't have a good sense of, you know, the contribution that uh, that different individuals through different immigration streams are having on productivity in Canada. But when we look at things like real wages, we can get a sense of, uh, of the impact those folks are having. And so when we look at economic immigrants, they have uh, stronger uh, average uh, real wages than uh, folks that are born in Canada who are working right now. So certainly those folks seem to be making a strong contribution to productivity in Canada, whereas other streams like asylum seekers, even non-permanent residents, depending on the stream that are coming in, aren't having a strong contribution. And so uh, we don't know what that, uh, what that balance looks like, but certainly uh, it depends on the stream and, uh, and the, the skills that those folks are bringing to the economy. Yeah.